you know, I do this for a living and I did this for a living for over a decade. So I spent a lot of time in the woods looking for people hiding. So uh, for me, as I look down in there, uh, if I was to just stroll by this, this, this probably wouldn't catch my eye. Hey guys, welcome back. I am Jason and I'm here with another Jason, the Jason Smith from Hobo Forge Survival. And we are gonna be talking about building a discreet hidden shelter today. And this man has loads of knowledge, loads of information, way more than I do on this subject, for sure. Taught at SEER school for the United States Army for special operations for about 10 years. Once I retired, 21 year veteran, uh, special forces and uh, uh, USASOC. Um, now just running a survival school out here and wanna, wanna bring to bear some of these uh, things that I've learned over the years and, and teach you. I think site selection is probably gonna be critical yeah. as far as picking out a camp spot. But before we get into that, I'd say we need to talk about why would we want to do this in the first place. So maybe paint the picture. Um, after this, let's call it the SHTF scenario, the world is getting weird, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. getting pretty creepy every day. Things seem to be progressively getting worse and worse. And I'm kind of of the belief that the world isn't going to flip a switch. I don't think the lights are just going to go out. Right. And then suddenly we're in the Stone Age again. I don't think that's necessarily going to be a case. You can disagree if you want. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. I think we're just going to have a steadily declining civilization <laughs> that, that slowly starts consuming itself slowly, yeah. uh, but surely. And I feel like having some of these skills of being able to hide in plain sight, being able to tuck away and get a little bit of shut eye, a little bit of rest, maybe between moving from point A to point B, mm -hmm. might be pretty useful skills for people in the near, not, not so distant future, absolutely, perhaps. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so what are your thoughts on that? I, I think, uh, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. Who knows how this is all going to, going to go down, but I would, I would advocate on the fact that some of these skills that you uh, are talking about here would be better practiced now when yeah. you have all of these woods accessible yeah. to you and you can make um, mistakes make mistakes yeah. you can you know but hiding in plain sight can work in a lot of different ways we were talking earlier specifically about um going out into some of these national forests and stuff like that and, and why a lot of people don't do that when it's fully accessible for camping mm -hmm. and things like that um, because some people are just you know a little bit apprehensive so learning some of these skills can tuck you away in some of those places and you can enjoy being out there and not be so visible yeah. to, to, you know, to other people that may be out there. Cause, because practicing the skills will give you the confidence mm -hmm. and the confidence will give you the, the, I guess the ability to go off into a little bit more wild places absolutely without the fear of something really bad happening, Abs right? Getting absolutely. lost, get lost, getting yeah. lost, getting eaten, all the things yeah, that yeah. people sometimes are, it could be legitimate fears depending on where you are, surely, I guess. Surely. But oftentimes it's not, it's just, Fears. It's just fears in general, yeah. man. You know, yeah. Fear can all all consuming, right? Yeah. And uh, and the excuses create another roadblock, and then another roadblock, and then pretty soon you've just uh, decided I'm, it's just not even. I'm just not going to go. It's just too much trouble. Yeah, just too much trouble. You know? Yeah. And uh, we live in such a great time of information where so much stuff is accessible. Like like the video we're making today. I mean, somebody can look at this and hopefully gain inspiration from it and say, Yeah, I'm going to go out there, even if you start in your backyard and then slowly inch your way. Uh, to to a to a more austere environment or more uh, kind of wild place, remote settings. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, but you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. Right. So, and and like I always say, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Right. What's the worst that's going to happen? You get yeah. out there, try. You might fail. Yeah. That's fine. But right now, like you said, is the yeah. best time to practice these skills because it's pretty easy. Yeah, it is. And, no one's and, actually hunting for you right now. That's that's right. That's right. <laughs> and well, and not only that, but like gear is so readily available. Ah, yeah. So you can you can get out and test different stuff and decide what works best for you with your skill level, gain skills, and uh, know what best that you want to carry and, and what for ease of setup or for carrying or what, whatever your situation may be as far as your, your family situation, your, your geo, geo, geographic loca location in which you live, mm -hmm. all those things factor in. You know, you may be in the city and you Maybe you have to hide in plain sight in the city. Right. All these, all the things we talk about are, are very much crossover into yeah, a, yeah. into a more urban urban setting. Sure. It's the same same principle. Same, same principle. Yeah. Same mindset. Uh, it just looks a little different. Well, yeah. Use, using what's available as opposed right. to like bringing bringing what you uh, what you are prepared to use to the equation. Okay. You're using what's available. So today we're training in North Carolina, um, in Cameron, North Carolina, at my survival school. I've got 15 acres of wooded. Very diverse ecosystem here, and we're down closer to the creek. We're in the bottom right now. We're in now. the bottom. Uh, yeah, there's got a little our, small creek right 
there in our creek. So we've we've uh, we've conveniently uh, located ourselves close to a water source, but in in a thick area, uh, so that uh, we're blending into the environment already. Uh, maybe not with a shirt, but you know we're blending in this good looking shirt <laughs> into this environment just due to the, uh, the 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 flora that's down here closer to the creek. Sure. So less work on our part to have to hide when nature wraps its, it's arms around hiding us. us. Yeah, it's already hiding us. Yeah, honestly, it's and it's winter time, so the leaves are not on the trees. I mean, we got a little bit of stuff going on here, but mm -hmm. but not much. Um, but still, even with that said, this is so thick with vegetation, you can't see more than what twenty yards. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit. You can catch some glimpses, some holes here and there, but yeah, for yeah. the most part, it's pretty thick. And if this was summertime, it'd be. Oh yeah, it's going to be thick down yeah, there. Yeah, really. You'd be able to hide. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, cool. So, sure. so um, we're going to pick out a spot. We're going to select a, a site. What are some of the primary things that you're going to look for with a site uh, when you're not just not just camp? Obviously, mm -hmm. you want to look for the same, the normal stuff, widowmakers, and all the game Absolutely. trails, all the normal stuff that we would look for in camps. But what are some primary things that you would consider if you want to stay off the beaten path and not be found? Yeah, I'd say, uh, you know, we use the, you know, we were talking about the acronym BLISS earlier, and I think that 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 one acronym is all-encompassing, you know, so you want to look at the situation in such that uh, you can blend into the environment around you, and that could be um, simply being away from where normal people would go. That's going to help you blend because there's not going to be anybody looking for you, per se. And um, uh, you want your, your, uh, you want your shelter or the place that you're going to hunker down to be able to almost be subsurface without digging a hole, right? So you want to be low to the ground, right? So the L in bliss. Uh, you want it to be irregular in shape. And as we pan around here and look, there's no, there's no straight anything. Everything's irregular in shape. So we want to blend into the environment that's very much uh, irreg the irregularities that are already here. We want to capitalize on those and we want to use those to our advantage to continue that irregularity. You want it to be small in size, because um, you small in size, especially in a cold weather environment, is going to ensure that you have uh, plenty of uh, heat coming off of your body. Because we're we're talking a situation where we may we may not be burning anything because that's going to attract. Fire. We're not going to want to fire attract yeah. attention. And the last thing is seclusion, right? Secluded area. So again, going back to that <clears throat> off the beaten path. Game trails, I'm not so worried about, but but walking trails, surely. Game trails, not that big a deal. Most people aren't going to walk down a game trail. They may or may not, depending on how thick they, they want to get into the woods. But, but you'll have to figure that out when you get uh, get into the area and, and look at like how well they're, the game trail's traveled, uh, whether or not it looks like any humans have used it. But um, yeah, so if you just let that one acronym kind of guide uh, the, your decision-making skills on, on where you set up, and then you just kind of look at what you can bring to bear. You want to use as much from the environment as you can. And I say that because the more you commit out of your own gear to build your, your site, uh, the more you're going to leave behind if you get run out of there. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's if very, you got to go right now. That's right. It's a very yeah. important, it's very important to, to practice your setup using, uh, using, uh, as much of the environment has to offer because it's going to blend better anyway. Then you trying to make your gear look like the environment, just use the environment. Right. And then when you have to beat feet out of there, the less you have to harvest and pack away, if you got to get out on the quick, uh, the more stuff you're going to have to set up the sure. next day. You don't want to leave that stuff behind because yeah. you've left a resource behind for somebody else, number one. And number two, it could be indicative of maybe your skill level, maybe you know, uh, you know, why was he carrying that? Or, providing information. Yeah. To about, about, about you, about your training. Uh, your level yeah, yeah. Of training I didn't even, I, that, that I didn't even think about that side of it is that, no. you know, you could be leaving behind some perhaps vital information. Right. And that, you, well, yeah, else. just, you're, you're saying something about saying something right. to, to them. And that may not be a, an absolute concern depending on the, the, the scenario you find yourself in. But, uh, I look at it more from, uh, now I'm in a gear less scenario. Like I, I, I carried this gear for a specific purpose and it, and it has a specific, uh, it fulfills a specific need. And if I leave it behind now, that need is even met by something else. So now I'm, I'm hyper distracted on trying to procure another piece of gear that can fill that gap yeah. instead of Which paying attention to it. Which might put you in a vulnerable absolute, position. It, it, it will, yeah. it will put you in vulnerable because yeah. now your brain, you know, too many minds, you know, from Last Samurai, too many minds, you know, I'm now minding this now because I've left this behind. So I think we'll tuck back in here. It looks pretty thick. Um, you can kind of get some visibility up the hill, but down in here, it's uh, very, very thick.
right. moving through stuff like this is one of the reasons why I don't like to carry a lot of crap. Right. <laughs> because yeah. your big rucksack gets hung up on everything. It, it's really irritating. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> carry what you need. Yeah, carry what you need and only what you need. This is kind of yeah. a cool little spot right here. Yeah, and you think about the, you know, the magnolia. Obviously, magnolias keep their leaves all winter. Um, and the, the, the conifers, the, the, even though technically a magnolia and your, your holly over there are not conifers, they keep their leaves because of the waxy outing, right? So the waxy outing on this leaf right here causes it to lose less moisture. Therefore, it doesn't dry out and the leaf doesn't fall off. So we're capitalizing on this magnolia giving us some camouflage. You know, as, as people look through here, this magnolia is going to break up, break up our, our, um, our shelter. And it's going to, um, especially if we uh, camouflage our shelter with the environment around us. And you think about how hard it may be to get in here. So I want to choose a path of egress out of this um, that I can manipulate myself through there very quickly at night. Not during the day, at night. Right, because at nights when, you know, either I, I choose to stay or I choose to go. If I choose to go, I need to be able to get out very quickly. If I choose to stay and hunker down and, and roll the dice, that's fine. But everything around, everything else around me should be very hard for somebody to get into. Of course it is. A lot of tanglefoot, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I want to find a, a place, I want to set up a place that's very hard for somebody to get into. Not only just to see, but if they do discover my location... For them to get to me, they're tripping and turning and trying to making lots of noise. Exactly, yeah. they, you know, it, and that's going to be my early warning. Number one and two, that's going to give me the, the the time distance I need to to exfil uh, exfil the place. So I don't want to make my exfil or my egress so clear that somebody's able to I mean, use, you know, that as use a way it. In. Yeah. So maybe just simply get this dead stick right here. Maybe I clear this path out. I clear this path out, but I take this dead stick. And I move that dead stick more down through here, right? So I'm still, this is still about chest level as somebody tries to come through here. But I know if I just clear out like this little stuff right here, I can move and negotiate this stick quite easily. But if somebody sees this, it looks like nobody's walking across that. So as we move around and, and we look for resources uh, to, to build our site here, we don't want to travel uh, too far away from our site to haul resources. And the reason being is, Everywhere I move through the woods here, I leave spore behind me, and, and those are indicative of my presence in that location. And then dragging that stuff back. So when I harvest it, you know, I'm, I'm chopping, I'm cutting, I'm doing those things. Those are all indicative of human presence or something like that. So I also want to choose a place when I'm, when I'm setting up that has a lot of resources in a very close proximity to where I want to set up my shelter. Uh, that, therefore, it's not, um, you know, highly indicative of, you know, they, they're they're they, already they, here. Yeah. They've already found you if they see the sign that you've left. You're, yeah, you've, yeah, you've already stayed or gone right. at that point, right? So if they find something over there that you've drug all through the woods, well, they're just going to follow your drag trail right. right to you. So talking about tools for a mission such as this, building a, a discrete type of shelter, I've always said that, you know, a saw is a really helpful tool because it's quieter than the chop, 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 hacky hack kind of kind of noises. You can do a lot of stuff um, quieter just in the techniques that you use. Like you just pulled out your knife and you're gonna carve away at this sapling right here and cut it to the length that you want. And that is a silent, silent thing that doesn't require a whole lot of noise going on. Having a good sharp tool, pretty important. And even if you are using something like a tomahawk or an axe or something like that, if that's your preferred preferred tool, if it's really good and sharp, it's going to take a whole lot less wax to get through the material. If it's a dull, abused, old, rusty machete, yeah, that yeah. you're going to go, cha, 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 you're yeah. going to be chopping away for an hour on. Yeah, it's it's smart to have a good maintained tool. Huh. I'm a I'm a terrible listener. Well, I don't know. Know. Well, that's not good. Because <laughs> I, because I'm saying stuff you need to hear. <laughs> I, everything I say is really important. Yeah, you, I'm should, like, <laughs> like, you I'm, should be listening. I'm giving you gold. I know. Have you ever been in a situation like that, a real life situation like this, where you needed to maybe not such a in a such a primitive state, but have you had to build yourself some sort of really secluded camp because you didn't want to be found? Has that ever happened to you in your career? No. Uh, short answer. Um, you know, mo most times we would uh, we would kind of shelter in place, uh, and most of my experiences, real world scenario experiences, come from overseas, right? So, 
Um, you always try to put yourself in an advantageous place. You wouldn't put yourself someplace like this. You would own the space. So you would go to high ground and you would be visible and you would be, oh. you would be known because you bring to bear. You're not um, by yourself. You're not by yourself, right? So uh, being a singleton, is a, is, yeah, that changes the game quite quite a or lot. Or even two of us. Yeah, or even, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. exactly. we, we have what we have. Gear-wise, we have what we have. Ammunition-wise, we have what we have. Uh, food, water-wise. Um, so, you know, the, the detrimental effects of sleep deprivation and fear and the psychological strain that that causes on an individual of, of not knowing what's happened to their family per se, mm -hmm. or what's going to happen to them or where they're going or what's going to be there when they get there. Right. So all those are, are things that can weigh on you quite, quite a lot. So, uh, this is the easy part yeah. of dealing with a scenario like this building a shelter and staying hidden that's that's easy it's everything else that that you deal with psychologically like why are you doing this mm -hmm. things have gotten pretty bad per, uh, per se right and uh but by in and by practicing this stuff now when times are good it's one less thing for you to worry about correct when the real life scenario is upon you you know how to do this you're correct. not you're not worried about it. You know what to look for. It's not like, oh, I have no clue what to do. Correct. And I'm freaked out about this as well. Yes, <laughs> correct. Know? This is a this should be an autopilot kind of moment. You should already be able to sur survey the the landscape and uh, and understand the socioeconomic unrest that maybe you're dealing with, and and know the environment you want to push away from, and 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 what environment you want to push to, um, and and then the the things in that environment that you truly feel like you want to uh, exploit to your advantage and but all those things should be seamless yeah you know as i sit here and build this i'm not really paying attention to my surroundings you know i'm expecting jason to do that yeah <laughs> and he's too busy filming so. i'm supposed to see the bear yeah yeah, yeah right. up on you well you know and, and and this scenario maybe the bear is not the one i'm worried right. about you know yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm worried about somebody uh, a two-legged foe yeah exactly as opposed to a four-legged one i mean maybe and I'm not, I'm not pitching all doom and gloom here you know sure. i'm just uh, i'm very much uh, pulling, you know, having a, a sense of situational awareness while you're doing this. So that's another thing that bleeds into the skill set. If I can do this very quickly, I know what I'm looking for. I have the right gear. I can throw this up with without not a lot of uh, mental, you know, thought process. That that gives me more situational awareness to my, the environment that's going on. You know, I'm not like banging and chopping and trying to figure out my hawk because it's the first time I've ever used right. it. And I'm, and then they guess and I cut myself and now I'm a liability because yeah. now I'm injured. Sure. Because you were rushed and yeah, panicked. Well, and, well yeah. I, I rushed because I was, I felt rushed because I was unpracticed. Mm -hmm. You know, that, right. th that causes you to speed through scenarios as being unpracticed because you, stuff. yeah, because you think, well, I don't really know how to do this. So I need to do it faster. Right. Yeah. yeah, 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 <laughs> you yeah. Know, which doesn't seem to make much sense. Doesn't to me. Work. Something that I feel that is oftentimes overlooked is calorie expenditure doing activities like this. And not even this, building s shelters and structures and stuff. It's moving your body from A to B. A hiker on the Appalachian Trail burns, I forget what the number is, but I want to say it's somewhere around 6,000 calories a day, somewhere in that, in that ballpark, depending on their body size and pace that they're doing, that kind of stuff. Six to 8,000 calories, whatever it is. That's a ton. It's a ton. And the only reason that they can do that day after day after day is because they are carrying that food with them and or they have uh, pickup locations where they can get more calories. Doing that kind of activity, this kind of activity in a calorie deficit, it becomes much more challenging in my experience. Without having proper nutrition, proper calories in your body, your levels of lethargy just go, oh yeah, oh man, it gets bad, right? No, abso yeah. absolutely. And the, the, the more you can build the skill around uh, kind of like least amount of calories, like you've practiced it so you know you can do it faster and more efficient means you spend less calories doing it because people overlook the amount of calories burned thinking. Yeah. And now we've already talked about psychological stress yeah. and how that weighs on you uh, calorically. So you're burning through a ton of glucose just simply thinking about, is this going to happen? Is am I going to be discovered? Like, where, where am I going next? You know, all those things, depending on the scenario, obviously, I don't want to make everything doom and gloom, but the more practiced you are, again, the less mind you have to put into this, then the physicality is very much decreased because I'm not rushed. As I rush, I take a chance of injury. I take a chance of burning more calories. The difference between somebody walking versus running. I spend way less calories walking than I would running. Um, 
and uh, less, less water, less calories, all those things have to be considered. So being practiced in a skill and being able to uh, implement that skill in, in a way that uh, um, is really calorie light, if you will, all goes back into practice. And, uh, you know, you can practice to run and run and run and run and run, and certainly uh, you'll be able to run further faster, but your body's still going to burn calories while you're running. Uh, obviously, your body's going to burn calories while you're doing this, but if you don't, the wrong site selection could cause you to walk further to obtain resources. It could cause you to, you know, abandon your site midway through build and, and, and wasted just, all that. You yeah. wasted all that time. So there's a lot of mindset stuff that uh, that comes into uh, into play when you're when you're practicing these things. So you can really save a lot of calories just through practice. Mm -hmm. so. You've got a hawk. Yeah, I always carry it. <laughs> they told me I couldn't carry it when I was filming in New York because they said normal people don't carry tomahawks. What? I said, I said. If they go to Hobo Forge, survival of every normal person in every America, normal. every normal person in America, this is the new normal. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, honestly, who wants to be normal anyway? Normal is like soft and squishy. I don't want to be normal. No. 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 Uh -huh. Middle ground between a chopping knife and, a, and an axe or a, or a strong hatchet, you know? So this is, a, this is lightweight, removable. I mean, selfless plug for Hobo Hawks at Hobo Forge Survival. Selfless <laughs> <laughs> when I look to build some sort of shelter, it always makes sense to try to utilize the existing structures that are already there so you don't have to manipulate things around. You don't be hacking things, clearing stuff. If it's already there, just use it. So if we've got an already existing kind of ridge here that Jason spotted, we might as well maybe try to use that as part of our shelter since it's already here and already wrapped up with vines and all the stuff. Maybe yeah. we can just use it. And he's wedged it between that fork of the tree right there. And then we got uh, we got this vine right here that's still attached to the tree. Instead of cutting the vine, you know, completely away, why don't we just cut the vine, and then then we can then use the vine as a piece of cordage to then tie this ridge in place. Nice. And just run that vine through there, and now. One less piece of kit that you have to use out of your pack. I don't have to take it with me. I yeah. don't have to worry about it. And yet, it's going to be plenty strong enough to accomplish the task that we have for it, which is just to keep this ridge pole in place. And look at that. So you're thinking right here, kind of this is where we're going to be? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, uh, see, I'm bending these in right here. Yeah. Oh, I see those. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you now. So bring it around. Bring it back through. And that'll hold What that. do you call that knot? I call that a... It's an Indonesian uh, whip yeah. finish. Whip finish. <laughs> yeah. I call it I call it delicious. <laughs> it's a delicious knot. Delicious <laughs> knot. The Indonesian whip. Not to be confused with the Swahili. Swahili whip stitch. Yeah, that's a totally different. Different application. Surprised you didn't know that. Yeah. Surprised <laughs> you didn't know that. <laughs> I'm just building like a little frame here. Nice. I'm clearing out the inside. You got you brought out the big chopper. It is. Let big. me see what you're working with here, big guy. This is wow. Look at that. This is the new uh, uh, instructor heavy. Just doing some bringing it out here for a little field use. Continuing to put it through its paces. That's a beefy knife right there. Um, and it ends up being a little bit bigger than you would like then certainly don't implement any man-made products into that shelter that could highlight your presence. I would just build it all out of natural material where it blends better. We got some fire making material right here. This looks like an old stability ball, an exercise ball. <laughs> yes. Why does, why does stuff in like, like this end up in the woods? You know, you know, it's, it's weird. You know, you, you think that, when you see stuff like that, generally, I look for a body of water that floated it here. Right. Because I guarantee somebody wasn't working out out here. <laughs> you don't <Yeah>. know. You <laughs> don't... <laughs> don't judge me. You don't know what I'm doing out here. <laughs> Plenty of room in here outside of this poison ivy vine here, which I didn't notice upon the site selection. So very important as well to identify uh, the local local flavor, if you will, that's going to 
that's going to um, uh, cause you some detrimental effects. And don't so, lick it. Yep. Don't don't be chewing on this <laughs> while you're while you're sleeping at night. Like, that's one of the. What if we use this natural vegetation here as kind of our as our concealment, mm -hmm. um, and we put up a simple like your tarp, or if we use my poncho or something like that underneath this as our rain protection because otherwise waterproofing this is a oh yeah it's an ordeal yeah it's a lot of lot lot of holes you have to plug yeah so what if yeah. we what if we tie our like let's say I, we use a poncho and we tie our hood right here yeah and then we stake out our corners there ish yeah. where you are and then you've got your little hooch that's ready to that, rock. That, that's perfect and then you know, it kind of drapes around you gives you waterproofing holds yeah. in heat and then it, it blends very well because like you were saying it's it's underneath yeah uh, you know, and closer to the ground. Uh, thermal, um, to my understanding, it's best to have two layers minimum of coverage above you because that will protect you from being seen from like a thermal scope of some sort, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Uh, because one layer, your body heat will potentially warm up that first layer and it will glow. But if you've got a second layer that's not touching, like this trap, natural trap. Yeah, 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 like this natural vegetation over above our above our heads, it might potentially conceal our position a little bit from that. If that was a concern, I know I'm getting a little bit into the uh, into the weeds there, but but well, you know I, much about that? Well, no, and and uh, because in general, the 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 from a military perspective, the enemy that we've been fighting for the last twenty years, they don't have that. Um, they don't have the capability. So, um, I would certainly think that you would be cognizant of that ability for that platform to see you would be more for self-rescue than for detection. So you'd right. want to actually exploit you that, want to that, show up. that heat signature, yeah, right? Because yeah, yeah. now in a situation where somebody's looking for you that has that capability, well, yeah, then, then it is a concern. Well, then you've either done something very wrong or think, or you're fighting against an enemy that's probably going to... Yeah. A superior. Yeah, very very much so. If they, yeah. have, they have that ability, it's going to be very... I think it's going to be the least of your worries, uh -huh. um, to be honest. Um, but I would think that if by by covering yourself up and then having something to break up that heat signature certainly would uh, it would be less indicative that it was potentially a human. So it could be an animal or right. something, you know. So uh, not being um, completely familiar with uh, those systems or mm -hmm. or or how to hide from those systems. Yeah. Um, I think that just anything you can do to break up your your heat signature, break up your outline, yeah. is always going to be one of those things. Now, I mean, uh, you, you being out there and them looking for you—that's highly indicative of a heat signature in that area. Sure. Right? So that that's that's you until proven otherwise. Right. Right. But um, we're talking about a, just a simple flyover, and then you know whether or not humans are in the area. Yeah. You know, you putting those stop gaps in between. Could definitely uh, eliminate uh, the uh, maybe the indication that it's a human versus yeah, yeah. an animal or something like that. Yeah, I think a lot of people a lot of people have like a, a false idea of what night vision or uh, thermal does. It, you can't see through things. It's not mm -hmm. you know X ray vision. It's not that. So so if you have uh, vegetation between you and that person that has that. They can't see you. It's not, it doesn't, you can't see through trees. You can't see right. through the leaves, anything right. like that. Just a couple, even just thick vegetation doesn't even have to be completely uh, covered overhead. Yeah. You can still see the sky a little bit. It's very difficult for those devices to see through that stuff. So when you're picking, we go back to site selection. If your site selection um, is dialed in, you don't need to worry about that quite so much. Where I live, you don't have it here as much, I guess. Uh, but where I live, we have rhododendron and um, mountain laurel. You guys have that here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Out west. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, we're we're closer to the coast uh, in this location from where I live. And I live in the mountains, and we have rhododendron. We have mountain laurel. It's really thick. And it's mm -hmm. like evergreen. It's kind of like your um, what's this? What's this tree called? Magnolia. 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 Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the magnolia. The leaves look actually very, very similar. Very much so, but closer yeah. to the ground and in your face. Yeah, yeah. And it's, in your way. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So. Being underneath something like that gives you very good concealment and cover from the air Absolutely. if you were concerned about such things. But. When I think that, you know, going back to what you were saying about like the night vision goggles per se, um, the, the benefit of the night vision goggles, obviously being able to see in, when you're moving around at night, is, um, is movement. 
you know, because because everything's green. Everything's green. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see things when you when you can see them, but indicator it's it's your ability to see movement. Right. So if I'm walking in the dark, and you go like this, I can't see you because it's dark. Right. But if I have night vision on and you go like this, I'm gonna pick up on that movement. Right. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. So if you're well camouflaged and, and sitting you're, still, and you're sitting still. Then you're probably not going to be seen. Right. You know, you could have somebody walk all the way up on you, mm -hmm. and unless there's an indicator, unless they can, because you can delineate things. Sure. You know, where you can say, okay, well, that's foliage. That looks like a poncho. Yeah. I'm going to go towards that poncho. Sure. Kind of thing. But if you're hiding in a in a natural cover scenario, um, you're going to be very very hard to see, especially yeah. if you're you're not moving. Especially if someone's if someone's actually looking for you. Sure. Yeah. If they're not actively looking for you. Be hard to spot that. Absolutely, well, yeah. unless there's movement. Yeah, right, right. because yeah, yeah. your eyes are attracted to movement. Sure. Think about it. If we're sitting here talking right now, and, and a deer was walking over there, I'd be pulled you to that. It. I'd be pulled to it because it's moving. Right. And it's going to pull me out. So if I'm walking with nods on at night, and I see something move in my nods, I'm going to be like, "What is that?" You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether I'm looking for something or not. Right. You know. But but surely, if somebody's actively looking for you, then they're going to be looking for um indicators yeah. uh that you that you're out there but i think if if nobody's looking for you and we're, we're assuming that's the case in building this shelter we've had the site selection we've you know we, we've uh we're trying to use the elements of bliss to to build here you know there's a, there's a good chance if nobody's looking for us we won't be detected right you know by anybody and normal people don't walk around with nods anyway <laughs> You know? Right, and I say yeah, yeah. I, I hate to use that word "normal." I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people that have them nowadays. For I agree. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, but it's still a small percentage of the population. Yeah, yeah. I, I, absolutely, and and you know, uh, the fact of the matter is, like, what are you know, what is somebody doing walking around the woods with nods on it at night anyway? Right. You know. Yeah. Exactly. That guy's actively looking for something. Right. Maybe. Yeah. Right, right above you. Yeah. This is a definitely a good spot. This is not the path of least resistance. Right. This is. <laughs> it is really hard to get around. <laughs> oh yeah, abs absolutely. Yeah. Which is exactly what you want for a spot like this if you're trying to stay off the radar. Absolutely. Yeah. So I just just tied off the hood of the poncho here, hooked it over a knob on the uh, on this sapling. Very simple. L listen, there's. 100,000 knots that you could tie for shelters and stuff like this, but if you don't have to use them, don't use them. And then this right here, you know, since this poncho has convenient, what is this, bank line? Yeah. You know, it's got bank line here, so I don't necessarily need to tie a knot. I can just take the bank line hook and over. just hook it over. Yep. And, and now I've got two corners established that are going to be, now I could obviously tighten that up a little bit. I was just trying to get it up out of the way. And then I come over here, kind of do the same thing. Simple. Yeah. And one of the elements of bliss that Jason was talking about earlier is irregular. So if you want to keep your shelter from being seen, you make it irregular in shape, meaning not straight lines. And if you pitch your your poncho or your tarp or whatever it is taut and tight and with really rigid lines, it's going to be really well, not really easy. It's going to be easier for the human eye to spot that straight line. So by doing it kind of ragged and rough, I mean, we're still working on it, but by doing it ragged and rough and loose in some areas, it doesn't have those straight edges as much. That's, that's what we're talking about, having a kind of an irregular shape, doesn't have a lot of straight lines, and it, uh, it will shed the rain off of you. And that's really all you're after for the most part i mean some situations you need to block the wind you need to do all the things but in this situation where we are right now if this was i mean i don't even think it's going to rain mostly we yeah. just want to maybe keep the dew off of us yeah. <laughs> and if it and if it um if it uh by, put, by coming down to this area we're in the low ground there's gonna be less wind down here yeah so that's a good thing um if you look at you know you got the kind of a uh, egress trail out of the back. I could block that completely off in the back if I wanted. If if my primary means of exfil was kind of this way, I'd go this way. 
So if I want to head back that way towards the creek, then I would uh, close this front stuff off. And how, then how many way. options would you want? The, the uh, environment you chose would really dictate that, right? So if you have a high incident of uh, high uh, probability, if you will, of, of approach, because maybe there's a road, a main road up there, or there's a trail up there that's uh, been used, well used trail. Most then likely, most likely direct, avenue direction. of approach. Right. Yeah, exactly. Then I'm going to block off that side. And I want to escape out the back way because, in general, I don't want to run that way because I'm, I'm more more than likely going to run into somebody. So I want to head in the opposite direction. So because that is the more open area as you go uphill, and, and I, I can hear cars in the distance, so I know there's a there's a road up there. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna block. I want to maybe have full visibility of that, but I also want to put as much between me and and, and that direction as possible. To slow those, uh, slow any pursuers down or, or anything of that sort. So I'm gonna try to slip out the back. And then you, you could continue to like build up and around you to block off some of the, uh, uh, to add add some some heat. But that's gonna keep the rain off you, no issue. Yeah, for sure. So this will keep the rain off you. You can sit in here and get a few minutes of shut eye before you absolutely skedaddle. You want to have this side open because you may have to go down there and harvest water and bring it back up and process it through your grail or through you know some other means other than boiling. Um, so you want to be you don't want to walk this way to get that way. Right. You want the path of least resistance for you as well because that means you're going to be quieter. It means you're going to have uh, you're going to be able to do it more, accomplish the task faster as well. Right, right. So we're, so we're walking in the direction of the path most traveled, where the most likely somebody would be located be walking by or something like that very unlikely unless they have a specific reason like us they're gonna ha they're not gonna go through this thicket of briars and stuff it's just it doesn't make sense five. i'd say 25 yards away and this is a human scanning this area right now tell oh. me if you could spot that viewers that you're looking for it yeah so now put yourself in a situation where you're passively watching that pan like you as if you weren't looking for it and just see if anything jumps out at you because you have to look at through two sets of eyes this wouldn't be a bad idea for you to do as well if you were setting up something like this correct me if i'm wrong but stepping back a ways taking a look at it and assessing oh i see that little spot i can i can see that little spot and then i can go fix that that's exactly right yeah. i mean that, that that is without a doubt uh, a good idea only uh, but only do it it, it, it should almost be done before and after. So when you're doing site selection, you're also standing back looking. If I look, this is quite open down in here because we offset from a, a because it was too wet where we were setting up the original shelter. So we offset a bit, but we were originally back behind this part, which is completely invisible. Yeah, even if you come over even better, here, yeah. it's even more. It's a wall all the way down here, which is why we chose here. We're only stepping back, panning over this open spot because this is the only opportunity you would ever get to get a glimpse of this. Right. Once because you if, get to you keep, you keep walking, here, it again. it's gone again yeah. for good. Like there's no yeah. way you're going to see so, it. So that's where your site selection kind of comes in is, is being able to observe the area in which you think you're going to be and then looking for p potential problems or those gaps early on. Because those can be addressed early because in general, uh, if I can address a lot of those things prior to, then I don't have to look afterwards, but it, it never hurts. If you can do it without creating too much spore that mm -hmm. somebody could say, well, it looks like somebody's been walking in a circle all right. the way around here. So that's indicative of somebody being here. Now they're going to look at this area harder. You know, I do this for a living and I did this for a living for over a decade. So I spent a lot of time in the woods looking for people hiding. So uh, for me, as I look down in there, uh, if I was to just stroll by this, this this probably wouldn't catch my eye unless I was actually actively looking for somebody. If I was just following this kind of, we're on this like a uh, little drop off this hilltop here. So we're kind of on the side of this. I wouldn't call it a ridge line where we live. There's not much of a ridge line here, but there's certainly some elevation change and it's quite flat through here. So this is going to be easier walking than down there in the thick stuff. And, and maybe I don't want to walk on top of the hill up here as I'm, as I'm looking because I really won't be able to see anything from up there. So I'm kind of getting a little bit closer to where I'm suspecting somebody to be, but I'm walking here where it's easy and the animals have been traveling. And if I was just walking along and I'm just kind of panning through here and I'm just kind of glancing, that may not catch my eye, you know? Yeah, most likely it would. 
That's my guess. Yeah, for sure. It's right there between those two trees. If you can't see it, it's right there. Should be able to spot it now. We'll zoom in. Man, you can't. You see what I'm seeing through the camera? Oh, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm looking right at yeah, it. Yeah, that's very, very well it. hidden. Yeah. That is with pretty minimal effort. Not a lot of... Yeah, no. construction going no, on there. Absolutely not. No cordage. Yeah, no cordage whatsoever, other than the little short pieces of bank line that are attached to the poncho already, which I always have on there. Um, and some of you are probably going to say, like, you know, like, why don't you just put the poncho on and lean up against the tree? Very valid point. That's a smart tactic, unless you need your hands free to do things. And what if it's not raining? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you ever yeah. wear a poncho when it's not raining that's right it's, it's very hot it gets a little <laughs> yeah. stifling so this is uh, yeah. on a day like today where we don't know if it's going to rain because you don't know right yeah. say you, you say you don't have internet access you don't you don't know what the day is going to hold for you you know i'm going to set up a shelter right now the ambient temperature outside is probably close to 70 degrees yeah. it's quite warm out i mean i have a silver flannel shirt on i'm, I'm comfortable yeah. but yet uh if i had a poncho on right now i would not be comfortable You'd be hot, i'd yeah. be hot so now i'm now I'm sweating because I'm hot because I'm wearing a poncho. Now certainly at night I could break that poncho out and and I could uh, I could sit against a tree sure. and that would be fine. Um, but then if I have to beat feet and I'm wearing that poncho, there's a good chance I could rip the poncho, get snagged on something. Yep. Now it's holding me up. Now I've damaged my equipment, or I've potentially lost my equipment, or I've been caught because I'm hung up with the poncho. You know, <laughs> I'm strangled in the poncho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I I like ponchos because I use a poncho primarily for shelter. Mm -hmm. I don't use a poncho primarily for rain gear, although I do. Right. Um, but a poncho as rain gear solely, it's not really that great because it's kind of in the way of stuff a lot. It's yeah. nice and flowy and breathes good in hot weather, mm -hmm. but it's kind of, eh, it's kind of a pain sometimes. But because I can also use it as shelter and I can just put it on and lean up against the tree, those are the reasons why. Absolutely, it makes a yeah. great, it's a, I mean, it's, it's a great design and it stood the test of time for yeah. those reasons. I mean, I'm not putting a poncho on if there's work still to be done. Right. I put a poncho on when all the work is done. And you're sitting still. And I'm sitting still and I've got it wrapped around me and I'm yeah. trying to conserve body heat, trying to stay dry. Agreed. That's it. Um, and that's that's its uh, that's its purpose. Yep. But uh, this is good. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Fantastic. Like having something underneath you is important as well. Some sort of ground pad, ground cloth, uh, another poncho, anything really to yeah. keep you off of the wet ground. If you have to build one, that's fine. Whatever it takes, even if it's just a minimal layer of piled up duff is right. better than nothing Absolutely. so yeah i don't know if we touched on that earlier but that's something worth noting uh, the loss of heat through conduction between you and the ground is, is a big is, deal is a big deal and yeah. uh more so in an arctic environment yeah. for sure but uh shouldn't be overlooked especially here especially when there the ground has a as a element of wetness there oh as my well. gosh yeah so that's uh the coldest i've ever been has been sleeping on purpose I did this on purpose. Mm -hmm. Stupid, I know, but but I slept on the ground without anything underneath me. I had just a blanket on top of Saw me. Saw the video. Oh my gosh, so cold. Yeah. <laughs> like we were talking about before, I think we were talking about laying in that fetal position. That's that's how you're going to be laying in the fetal position on your side mm -hmm. because that's the least amount of surface area of your body touching the ground possible sure. Sure. and still laying down. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you're just sitting up and being a uncomfortable, yeah, and miserable. Abs absolutely. But yeah, if you stretch out on your back. And your legs and your in your the a big part of your torso is touching the ground yeah. immediately. Oh, <laughs> me, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean every yeah. every part of your body that touches yeah. something yeah. is a transfer of energy. Yeah, it's crazy. It is. It's very it is. noticeable when it's cold. Absolutely. I think we pretty much covered most of the basics as far as bliss mm -hmm. principles um, and as far as concealing yourself if you have to bed down for the evening or the day mm -hmm. it, this it it's doesn't a great daytime shelter as yeah well. it doesn't doesn't matter because maybe you're moving at night for for security reasons and you want to be undetected um so you maybe you choose to move at night and you bed down during the day this is same principles apply mm -hmm. if you guys have questions uh please leave it in the comment section i'd be really grateful for that and i'll answer every question i don't respond to all comments but i definitely try to answer all questions legitimate questions of course <laughs> so um where can they find you the website's hoboforgesurvival.com uh there my classes are listed there as well as um you know uh, any type of uh, cutlery you're looking for um i do have a youtube channel that's growing very slowly uh due to content but uh hopefully this year will be a good year for the for the youtube channel and it's uh, under hobo forge as well cool
And on you're on Instagram. Oh yeah, just you know Instagram Hobo Forge underscore Survival. Yeah, on Instagram. So feel free to go check out what I'm got what I got going on over there as well. Thank you. Very cool. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Really, really do appreciate the views. It means a lot. If you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up, that would be great. Leave a comment, like I said before, any comment will do does not matter. And I cannot wait to see you on the next one.